So this was a Sears Kenmore Elite Quiet Pack. HE3T. We're getting an F21 code flash in there, which was a slow or no drain. If it goes over eight minutes to drain it, fires out that code. Could be the pump, could have just been that strainer. We'll see. So with this video, it could be pretty long. You can watch it if you want to. But for right now, I'm just going to fast forward to what it took to fix this thing. And it was actually a zero dollar fix had I figured it out up front. But, you know, you get the trouble codes, you read the instructions that come with the washer, you fix the things that it most likely is, that doesn't work, so you dig deeper. And I'll show you what I found. Well, I think I got this bad boy fixed. Woo! Yeah, it does! Yes! Yeah! Made it through the cycle! Finally! <laughs> After spending money for a new drain pump, and a new pressure switch was neither of those. I knew it had something to do with the computer getting a false reading on pressure. Thought maybe a plugged hose there, followed it down, found this thing they call a, I'll insert a picture, some kind of a pressure switch, uh, air trap, something or other. That thing was so clogged that it would build up water inside of it and then provide a false reading to the pressure switch. Um, the sud air and also the uh, F21 failed to clear the uh, tank but I knew the tank was clearing because the pump I'd watch it pump all the water out I knew the pump was good pressure switch well I don't know could have been the pressure switch when that didn't work I'm like come on it's something to do with that pressure switch not getting the right reading in the meantime I cleaned all the tubes took that tube off you see in the back there took them outside scrubbed them brushed them cleaned everything well at this point the gloves have pretty much come off okay buddy I'm taking off the kid gloves and putting on the very mad gloves I'm gonna go for everything I can think of I don't think it was it but I took this uh, drain hose off took it outside ran a brush and it cleaned it out got a little bit of gunk nothing crazy my suspect is perhaps this sampling tube that goes up to that pressure switch perhaps it could have a blockage in here so I'm going to try and clean it out I'm thinking about taking the ball the eco ball out of that tube right there see that green thing it's like a ball so there's the pressure switch tube coming down Tube coming down goes to here. If you look back in here, pull this little tab down, then I think you can pull this sampling tube assembly out. We're going to put a drain pan underneath it. That assembly had a couple little ground wires clipped in it. No big deal, just a way to hold them. There's also one screw back there that needs to be taken out. Then I should be able to pull this off, test and clean that sampling tube. Okay, there's that thing removed. There was a little o-ring around there, that tiny little little baby torque screw was in there and that plugged into this hole. Which basically you're measuring the level of the water from this point. So this thing here with the sample tube looks pretty dirty down inside there looks pretty filthy I've got my tetanus shot so I'm going to put this tube in my mouth and I'm going to blow in it it was a little harder than I would expect so I'm going to try and clean this out I've already taken a screwdriver and picked quite a bit of stuff out of here and I've been sticking it up inside of there washing it in the sink got quite a bit more now I'm going to try and get a uh, brush up in there get this thing all cleaned out I can still see a lot of black crud so we'll get this good and cleaned out you know perhaps this was causing the blockage keeping it from correctly sensing the water level definitely getting some nasty slime using the bristle brush okay I've removed a lot of crud 
out of this thing plus some that I pried out of there with the screwdriver at first so it's getting a lot cleaner I'm gonna slosh around a few more times but we're way better than we were I got it pretty much cleaned out took it outside got violent with it with the garden hose most of the black stuff you see here is just baked on to the outside of the tank it's not really sediment anymore so it's pretty clean and it's pretty dirty in my sink these three top screws holding on this top cover have a really fine thread you'll find if you take this back cover off there's four screws that are that really fine thread like the top three most of the others are more like a regular screw if you really pay attention you'll see that in some cases like right there you don't need you don't need to pull that screw out to get this back cover off it'll come right out over that and I believe those here are also that super fine thread stuff but if you take this back cover off don't take these out that you don't need to and keep track of which ones are the super fine thread and which ones are the standard screw thread these plastic things they just cover up access to the shipping bolts that come with it and you take them out and then you know, keep them in case you ever move but they're not important there's a couple couple screws here that can come out as well before you can get this back cover off once that was off getting that little uh, pressure switch air tubey thingy out was no big deal well I think I got this bad boy fixed Woo! yeah it does yes yeah. made it through the cycle finally <laughs> after spending money for a new drain pump and a new pressure switch was neither of those I knew it had something to do with the computer getting a false reading on pressure all of this junk plus a bunch more black slime was all in that filter housing mainly this thing here was taking up a lot of surface area then miscellaneous toothpicks, wires, stuff just three torque screws we're holding that panel on there expose this just unscrew it you can want to put a pan underneath it I have these drawers underneath yours might be on the floor but uh, so you it'll, it'll it's going to drip out and go down in here you know you just can't really help it but you know get towels underneath do the best you can with pans you can pull this thing out I cleaned this thing all up cleaned out inside there then when you slip this thing back in there's a notch here on the top that goes straight up and then just spin her in there until she gets tight I had actually put a couple of marks on there so I knew where it was but that's about where it was so this was a Sears Kenmore Elite quiet pack HE3T, we're getting an F21 code flash in there, which was a slow or no drain. If it goes over eight minutes to drain it, fires out that code. Could be the pump, could have just been that strainer, we'll see. You should always get back in behind there and unplug it first. Then this bottom panel here is held on by three screws. They've got a hex head with a Torx in them. There's one there, one in the middle, one on the far side. Get those out, and this whole panel will just kind of pull down slightly and come out. <laughs> well, 
Well, we've got the new drain pump motor, and right off the bat, you know, might get scared. It looks a little different than what's in there. There's a cover over the top of it, but basically this thing will just pop right in there. It'll be okay. It seems like a lot of places now are going to, they want to sell you this whole housing. So, yeah, it might be easy. Pop that whole housing out of there, but you got to get, you know, these tubes off of here, hoses, get it all out of there. Why not just replace the pump? So I'm going with just the pump. Now I tried just cleaning out this strainer, so you know, unscrewed this, and you saw what that looked like. It was full of junk. So I thought, hey, I got a chance here. You know, that might be all it takes, but nope. I think it helped a little bit, took a little bit longer, but still got the old F21 code. So most likely there's something wrong with this pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, work this cover off of here and then take the three Phillips screws out take the wiring connector loose in the back and then get this pump out of the way you can get this bar loose and a little bit out of the way just gotta squeeze together <clears throat> those connectors that push through that hole it'll come out that'll give you a little more room so that's you know pretty straight on access there I just went ahead and pried this up and popped these back two feet out of there and that way I can Turn this sideways and get get a, a look at that screw back there. I think the best way to do this is go ahead and put this red one in up front. Work these back two feet into place. Then you kind of pull up on this red one and get it to pop into place there so there's this back little cover just lift up on it pops up that exposes the electrical plug not sure if there's really an area to push but I just pushed right in here and it just came right out so now this should be free wiggle a little bit and whoopsie. So there you want to have a, a bucket and a towel ready. Didn't expect that much. I had drained it once before. Do you remember the time we dipped you in tar and stuck you to the backside of an angry water buffalo? But I guess we tried another load since then. So be sure you get that drip pan under there. We'll get this mess cleaned up in here with a couple more towels. So good safety tip there. Get some towels under there, get a drain pan ready. I did have this drain the other day, but forgot we had tried to run a load after I cleaned the strainer. Well, here's the old one. There is nothing obviously wrong with it. You know, no blades damage, not super excessively loose. Uh, does have a little bit of resistance to turning, but you know, so does the new one. But anyway, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and put this in, and you know, this is a good first shot. Obviously, they recommend that you check all the lines up in here for any plugs, and of course, your your main drain and all that kind of stuff. But I pretty much had ruled that out. This is usually the likely culprit right here. The old and the new, you know, they're definitely, definitely different, especially that doesn't have this outer, this outer casing and the little flip down cover over the electrical plug. But, you know, what's really important is does this, you know, mate up and go in there and does your electrical plug go into it? So most likely it will. So let's try and put it back together. There's a little o-ring that seals things, so you want to make sure that comes off of the old one and uh, gets a new one put on with the new one. The way this front is stepped here is a little bit different on this old one. The new one was kind of going in a little hard, which scared me for a while. I went and got some 
plumber's silicone grease and just greased up the o-ring a little bit kept working on it and it finally went in there but at first I was thinking that there might be an issue here with this housing but it went in there got the new motor screwed into place it went in a little tighter than I had wanted and in hindsight I wish I'd have paid a little more attention to where these screws were but I could see where the old threads were and I think this flat spot here kind of lines up with this flat spot here and there's some some tabs so it'll only go in in certain places but anyway it uh, popped together and we're gonna go ahead and snap in the electrical and get her uh, put back into place see if it works I think the best way to do this is go ahead and put this red one in up front work these back two feet into place then you kinda pull up on this red one and get it to pop into place there so you, know, you might have a slight concern that hey I kinda like this little cover that you know keeps the plug from getting dripped on but if that really worries you you might wanna consider that right up here there's some other stuff that doesn't have a snap-on cover so should be fine go ahead and snap this little wiring harness back in place and we're ready for a test run after being unplugged for a while should clear the F21 code so we'll we'll power up here and we'll go ahead and just uh, start a cycle and just hope it works its way all the way through without flashing a uh, F21 I was also getting a SUD like a like a big five there and then a little U like the bottom of that zero and then a, a D so S U D sud and that can mean there's too many suds in there it can mean a slow drain time so hopefully those two things were related Here's kind of the inner workings of the washing machine. We've got this heavy concrete counterweight here. You've got four shock absorbers all working together to smooth this thing out. Got the motor back there for the washing motor. And what we just uh, replaced here was the drain pump, which is going to suck water out of the tub there and then push it up this smaller tube and then out through your drain in the wall and then this here we had that open and we cleaned that out so apparently you should do that every year or so and the little booger's running right now hopefully she's doing something got that again okay the dang thing uh, coated out on me again so something's not right so I kinda decided to go full gorilla one I was gonna run a test where I was just gonna shoot the water into a bucket and see how that went see if I was getting good flow that would eliminate some things two I saw that that thing back there and I thought I can take that off and I can see right inside there then I took this back off now I think I see stuff up in that tube. I bent myself a, a coat hanger. I was able to stick that up in here. And then I looked inside. And what I could see is there's apparently like a ball. See that green thing? It's like a ball. It's kind of like a little check valve right there, I think. But this hose is clear. I think when I looked up into what I saw was just basically some corrugations. When I took that other hose off, got it out front here. You could jam a garden hose up in here and then see if water starts gushing out the drain. But, you know, my tetanus shots are up to date, so I just cleaned this up a little bit. Blew in there and seems clear to me. Okay, this thing is obviously a heater went in there 
There was also this thing sticking in one of the holes of that. <clears throat> My guess is this is some kind of a level sensor, maybe a sud sensor. You know, could it be bad and sensing that there's water in there when there isn't? Let's uh, maybe run a, a water flow test. That little sensor pulls right off there. I've got it partially pulled off, but if I grab that shiny part and pull it, it'd just come right off. It'll only go on in one direction. It's keyed. To get this gasket back in, you're going to need to separate that metal. That way this thing will have enough flex. It'll go in there. I've also lubed it up with a little silicone plumber's grease. We'll pop that black thing all the way in there, then tighten that nut. And that'll pinch it out. Also, way back in there, there's a little wire little wire holder that that heater element has to go through so there's a little wire element that that heater coil is supported from so you got to hit that make sure that things pushed in all the way there I'm going to push on it as I start to tighten that nut learning the hard way but that little sensor has got to go in there before you tighten that nut got my little test set up here where the drain hose instead of going down where it's supposed to there. I pulled it out and we're going to shoot it into a bucket. So I'm going to start this, run it, and then when I hear it going to drain, I'm going to come in here and judge do I think enough water is coming out of that. If a lot of water is coming out of there, then I'm going to say, hey, maybe it's some kind of a sensor, sud sensor, float, you know, something like that, saying that I'm not draining when I actually am. What's getting me to thinking on this one is that even the first time that I drained it to just check the strainer, there wasn't that much water that came out, you know, maybe a couple of cups. And then this time, I had a bonehead move and I forgot to drain it before I disconnected that pump. And yeah, quite a bit of water came out, but again, you know, not more than a quart. So really, is it not draining? I mean, it's not like, I see some videos where they say, well, you might have to use a, a shop vac, you know, to suck the water out of it. You know, you stick it maybe in your drain hose here or something like that and suck you know a gallon or so water out maybe more I'm not having that so we're gonna start a cycle here let it go for a while once it starts to go into the rinse come see how much water we got shooting out here while I was waiting I did go grab my long brush and kinda of ran it you know up inside there and yeah I got some pretty nasty slime out of there, but uh, we'll see, you know, I probably should have taken that garden hose and blown it through there. Worst comes to worst, you know, we'll pull this thing out away from the wall, take the back off of it, you know, totally get this hose out, run hot water through it, do all that kind of stuff, but first I want to see how much shoots out of there. Yeah, that's a pretty strong steep stream there. To the point I'm getting nervous my bucket might fill up here. If so, I'm going to have to flip over to my secondary bucket. Whew. Got lucky there. Okay, I can hear the little pump down there. She's a running. She's still a running, you know. Been gushed out of there for a while. I wouldn't say anything's blocked. Just about stopped running there. This little pump down here, she's running, but you know, it's kind of cavitating a little bit. There's no real water to pump, so a little bit noisy. Did the job though, but I think you know it's it's in here spinning right now, ro rotating, and so it's going to keep running to try and get you know every last drop out. All right, so what that tells me is we don't have a blocked pipe, and we didn't have a freak incident where we got a bad pump from the factory. This pump pumps like crazy once, you know, if it has water to pump. So those two things are out. My guess is that we're actually draining properly. There's just something in this washing machine not sensing that we've actually drained properly. Okay, things are pretty crazy around here, but she just, just went again. You know, it said, it had said sud over there, and I was in, you know, starting to look on the internet to see what that was. It cleared up, 
and then uh, boom, this thing pumped. It was coming out pretty hard when I ran in here. Definitely not as much as before. So, I don't know what that means. If you've got a bright light shining in here with this cover off, you can see down in there, you can see that heater, the U-shaped heater, and then over there is where that ball is at, that green ball. I've been looking at YouTube. One theory is that that float ball can get a hole in it, and it can sink, and that can plug your drain. I don't think that's it, because we're getting good flow. The other one is that up in this top panel back in this back corner there's an analog water pressure sensor that thing can go bad and somehow that causes the sud error as well so I'm still looking into those possibilities out of desperation I'm gonna run one of these uh, clean washer cycles and just see if you know by some crazy chance that would fix it but it won't. Alright, do your magic. Clean washer cycle. Eh, whatever. It's worth a shot. This is the, uh, the super clean mode. It's hard to see in there, but there's, oh, I don't know, a couple inches of water down there at the bottom. Alright, my clean washer, that failed. So now down inside this door up on the side there are some instructions and it tells you in here how to initiate a uh, diagnostic diagnostic test so I've uh, initiated that it's running through some tests I'm starting to get the feeling that that analog pressure switch that's up in the back corner under this top panel might be the problem. It's been working, I don't know, five minutes or so. It's on C6. I don't really know what that means, but I've made it to C6. And the diagnostic ends with an F21. Now our F21 is a long drain. Blah, blah, blah. Possible causes. You know, we've pretty much done all these things. So, it's kind of a mystery at this point. Got the new water pressure switch here. So let's go ahead and pop that baby in. I've got real tight quarters in here. I'm going to try and just pull this far enough away from the wall. You could, you should unplug it. I just went ahead in the basement and turned the breaker off. And I'm going to get these three screws in the back loose. Pull this cover back. The pressure switch should be over in that corner. Three screws out. Pull back on it. Separates. Get this top panel off. And there she blows. There's where the tube connects. Electrical connector, one last sanity check. Looks like a match. Let's open her up. There are two tabs to push up on the bottom back of that connector, and then you pull it straight out. Other than that, you've got this hose connected. You want to wiggle and wiggle and wiggle it while pulling on it and eventually it'll pop off of there. Now I'm going to take that hose with some uh, blue masking tape and just tape it to the side so I don't drop it down in there and have to fish it out. With this hose off and taped to the side you can just give this a 90 degree turn either direction and this just pulls out. Now I can easily see those tabs that I have to push. So I'm going to push in on those 
Got to have three hands here. Push in on those two tabs. Okay, maybe two fingers. I'll use my two fingers to push the tabs and kind of grip it. Okay. There's that. Now just uh, reverse that and put her back together. New one's in. I'm just going to clean some things up. Slide the cover back on. Three screws in the back. Go turn the circuit breaker on and hope for the best. All right, we're just about ready for the smoke test. The summary of the history of this was apparently months ago, my wife started seeing the SUD code over here, but thought it was just part of the normal cycle. That was months. Then, about a week ago, she says, I got an F21. Well, F21 is this, uh, usually this drain pump down here. So I replaced that. Still had the SUD code, still ended up with an F21. At some point I got like an F28, was a serial communication error. That's kind of scary. But hopefully it had something to do with a faulty one of these. So now we're ready to try it. My theory and my hope is that this went bad, caused the SUD code. Then at some point, months later, we got enough blockage in that strainer down there that it caused the F21 code. I don't think my pump was ever bad, but then I replaced the pump, still had the SUD code, still got the F21 code, and as I mentioned, that F28 serial communication code. Fingers crossed, let's hope this does it. This ain't no good. Got the damn SUD code again. Even with the new pressure switch, new pump, clean strainer. Mm.